So we talked a, a little bit about conflict energy, no? Where does conflict energy come from? So oftentimes when we come into a conflict, what we see is the position that someone will put out. We'll say, this is my position. So take, for example, the, the story of this family, this saga of the family. What were some of the positions that they might they might take in that? Any one of them. I mean, it was really a series of conflicts, no? So in the in the case of the wedding, what would be the position of the family? The, the, the position of the parents. They're against it. We are against the, the wedding, okay? Or this relationship. The position is, we're not going to join the wedding. Right? That's what they, that was, and they stuck to that. But what was, what was beneath that, do you think? What was the interest that they had? That was, was it a procedural thing? In a sense, it, procedural is maybe not the right word. But the, when we say procedure, was the process done correctly? They got, they, they got pregnant first. The process was wrong. Usually you're supposed to get married first and then get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, there is something about the process Maybe there's something psychological. What else did they, what did they feel? Why did they take the position about we're not going to join the wedding? It's a violation of uh, values. Okay, they felt, they felt offended, yeah. right? Embarrassed, ashamed. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the things. Maybe when we say a substantive, what do we mean by substantive? Maybe they had a concrete concern. How are you going to support? Support a family, okay? That means like, what, is the, what are some of the concrete material issues? So there's sort of, it could be any number of interests that are beneath the position. So we're not attending the wedding. Actually, what we're concerned about is one, we feel ashamed because of what happened. Two, we're, we're the, the issue of how are you going to support a, a family? And three, you did it baliktad ang proseso. You're supposed to get married first and then have babies, right? But beneath that, we could say, but where, what is this energy coming from? What are the basic needs that people have? Well, certainly for the, the, that family will, need to have, will also need to be provided for. So basic human needs, yeah? But there's also another kind of basic needs we have, which this is very common. Say, ah, yeah, food, shelter, clothing, health, security. But we also have what are identity-based needs? Meaning, community, intimacy, and autonomy. So this is affecting our family. No, it's not just about having a baby or about being in a relationship. It actually is changing the structure of our family when there's a wedding. So our sense of identity, like you were saying, is affected by this. Our sense of community, because we are no longer just us. Now we have another person and a small child. Our community, our need for community, our, need, our, cult, our sense community and culture are connected, right? Our, every community has its own culture. So. This is where the conflict is generated, the energy is generated down here at the basic needs. And the more that a conflict touches on these kinds of issues, the stronger the energy that might be generated within that conflict. And then the position here can be very hard. No, we definitely will not. Because no one ever maybe went down to these other issues to say, sometimes people just want that it's acknowledged that this is really affecting us, our sense of intimacy and connection, our basic needs as humans, or even touching on these things. Sometimes people just want to be heard and that they're making a hard stand on a position because they're trying to express something that it's maybe difficult to even sort of express in words. 
So that's why the process of communication, of listening, now we don't always need to go down into these you know, deeper and deeper levels. Not all conflicts are, are at that level. But conflicts that are, keep coming back up over and over again, there's probably something down here that's being touched by it, by the conflict. So how, how can we communicate in a, through conflict in a way that is productive, that will help disentangle this web that happens, you know, the relationships, the history, the, the, all the different episodes. It's like a drama. Episode one, episode two, episode three, and it keeps going. So Proverbs 12, 18 says, the tongue of the wise brings healing. And where, is that Corinthians? Speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, Christ. So these are some of the encouragements we have from Scripture. And I think I can use this. So um, a long time conflict uh, transformation worker, he says he's come up with identified seven attitudes. Actually, knowing the skills is important, can be helpful in communication. But even more important is having the attitude, because people can sense if you're really if you really care about what's happening. So that's why he says the first thing is to care about what the other person is saying. So you have to be focused on them, right? You have to be, if you're trying to move their hand, your hand while they're trying to do your hand, it's very difficult to do it well. So what are some of these attitudes? Caring, having a, like, curiosity. There's new information out there. Even information that is difficult or emotional. That's also, emotions are information. They will tell you something about what happened. Okay? Good communication requires focus. Right? You can't be distracted by other things. And it requires a joint effort. So both people have to work together between the speaker and the listener. Communicating is different than persuading, evaluating, and problem solving. So when we're communicating, we're actually trying to make sure that the message that I have is being received by that person and that I'm receiving the message they want to send to me. Persuading means you're just trying to convince them of your position, no? Or evaluating. These are, these are all different. There might be a place for these also in, to persuade or to evaluate and problem solve. But good communication means helping the information become clearer. We also need to remember that every, everyone has difficulty communicating. No? Some people are very, can do it easily. Others really struggle. Like for me, I have trouble some, right away if I'm in a conflict, yeah. if my wife and I are arguing. Especially. I need some time to step back and sort of formulate my thoughts. Yeah, if I may add, especially we as Asian, we are not that much bearing on traditional people. Right. Uh, when the issue comes, we're just kind of instead of uh, talking to each other, sometimes we just talk at the back of the other people, you know, and <laughs> become worse. You know. Yeah, I think w w one of the things we need to think about this in terms of is what is healthy, so there's two kinds of communication, direct communication, face to face, yeah. and indirect communication. Now, I do not think that indirect, some people say, well, you have to talk face to face, that's the only way to deal with it. I would suggest, not necessarily, sometimes indirect communication is a good way to do it. The question is, what is the purpose of our indirect communication? Is it really to help preserve the relationship and get the message across? Because that's what we, we don't want to affect our relationship. That's why sometimes we don't say it to the face. Or is it just to chismis? Yes, character assassination most of the time. 
So that's, that's, on the, that's the duty or the obligation of those who are communicating to determine. Maybe the, if I think this person can help me with this communication loop, then indirect can be OK. That's my theory. So the best communication will occur. So that's a very good point on number six. When people are genuine and natural. That's why one of the things I try to emphasize is formal mediation or conflict resolution process um, can be very difficult. And most conflicts are solved through informal when people feel like they can be themselves. When their people are involved are people that they trust, people that they know. So these are some general principles on how we can engage in our communication. So in a, what is a communication loop? Has anyone heard of this communication loop? Some people have heard of it. So it's review. So you have one person who wants to say something, no? Sorry, my artwork is not very good. OK, and one person is the receiver. This is their ear. So the, when you send that message, does it go straight through? First of all, what you have in your head, in your little utak, is not always what comes out of your mouth. So that's the first point of parang interference, right? And then there might be other things, environmental things, actually. So you might have like physical, it might be noisy, things like that. But you might also have hearing impairment. You might have also cultural interference. OK, or social interference. In other words, things that are in the environment that actually interfere with what, how this message comes across. Now, this person can also hear this. And what comes in the ear may not actually be what the brain processes. processes. You know? So there's another point of interference here. Now, once I've communicated, the speaker has communicated something, they're also communicating not only verbally, but non-verbally. So you have what's called the non-verbal communication. So that's sort of going like this. And as soon as I communicate, I see, uh, there's a response. So unless my communication is only one word, as I'm communicating, I'm also getting feedback from them, which will immediately influence. It then goes in this ear. It has the same interference here, and it will affect what I'm communicating. This feedback also goes through some of this other interference. So what we're saying is, one me if this is one message here that I'm trying to get across, I'm trying to, to get into here. And then there's messages that come after it. There's multiple levels where that can break down. Some are environmental, some are physical, some are social, emotional. So this is our communication. This is our direct communication. This is our what they call meta communication. It's what we're communicating about what we communicate. So like, for example, if I say something, my body language will tell you how I really feel about that piece of information that I'm trying to share. OK, so there's, there's levels and there's communicating beyond just communicating. So this is so all these points of filter or interference 
That's why it's important for us to keep in mind these attitudes, to realize that there's a lot of points where this process can break down. And this is when people might even be getting along, you know, let alone when there's conflict, when there's tension, when relationships aren't good. So all these, some of these other factors might actually get stronger, have more influence on the actual communication pattern. <laughs>